Hey everybody, how y'all doing? I'm Alan. I'm Lisa. Restoring Unified Radio Ministries is back uh, with a question and a topic and it just came up under my spirit and <clears throat> my wife kind of being the incubator that she is has uh, gotten some revelation from God and I actually have a two-part message so I'm going to go into the next message after this and the ideals and the promptings and the revelation came through my wife and it's kind of like the Holy Ghost just said get it teach it they need to know get it teach it they need to know but before I start let's pray father we thank you for the word of God this afternoon Father God, open up the ears of your people. Let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And when you speak through me and Lisa, let it be your oracles, that you and all things will be glorified. Let them hear you through us speak. And a bit, let our speech be with grace, seasoned with salt, that we should come forth and we should answer every man. And... Allow no corrupt communication to proceed out of our mouth, but only what's edifying, only what's to build the body of Christ up. Father God, we ask you to touch. We ask that you would just give us wisdom. Holy Spirit, bring back everything to remembrance from us, from the Word of God, from what we've experienced, so we will be able to share with your people. And um, we can go about this lesson and teach this word of God so people can have an understanding of who you are, the difference between falsehood and the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, if you will, I'm going to cut this message short. And it's called, Are We Gods? Are We Gods? Now, I've been around many, many occults, many, many religions most of my life. I've run into people that believe in the God of the higher power. I've been around people that were Buddhists. I've been around people that were um, into uh, Hinduism. Hinduism, different types of meditations, yoga, that type of stuff. Been around them mainly all my life. Uh, people that were practicing Judaism. Um, <clears throat> did some studying on the Jehovah Witnesses and how they believe. The nation of Islam. And um, different religions. Even been around people that claim to be atheists, but they were actually agnostic. I, I find it hard to believe that usually when a person goes around and they hurt themselves or they catch themselves in a crisis, a crucial crisis or an accident, the first thing that comes to their mouth, because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks, is, oh my God, isn't that true, Mama? Mm -hmm. Every time you Jesus turn around, Christ. or Jesus Christ, they use the name of the Lord in vain. But they don't believe it. They say it, but they don't believe it. Oh my God. I know every time my favorite team, the New York Mets, I love baseball. And I've been a Mets fan since I was 1963, since 1963, until I was three years old. Dad used to take me to Shea Stadium to all the ball games. And the new slogan now with the New York Mets, and it's always that blue and that orange color. Every time somebody hits a base hit and drives in, you know, an RBI, which is run batted in, they drive a run, or they hit a big home run and runs come in, me and my wife noticed, my wife says, what does that mean? <laughs> they would hold this sign and say, O-M-G, which means, oh my God. 
Like, I can't believe he hit the home run. But they would always use the name of God in vain. So I think it's kind of cute, but then really, I kind of want to take it seriously. Do they really believe in the God that they're saying, oh, my God, too? <laughs> okay. And then on the flip side, they'll turn around and get mad and say, GD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or they would get mad. Yeah, GD. We don't want to say that. Because a lot of times I got mad and used his name in vain. I said, G-O-D-D. And it came out my mouth so much it became like a, a, a habit, which I had to catch. And my wife reminded me of it, and I said, oh, my goodness, I have to stop this. So I had to go back and ask God for forgiveness that I used his name in vain, that I cursed him and didn't realize I cursed him. There are four different types. I want you to write this down. There are four different types of people who either say they believe in God or a God, or they don't believe in God. I want you to write that down. The first one I want to bring up is ag. Gnostic, E-G, N-O-T-I-C, agnostic. This person doesn't believe in God, but they know there's a God. They believe there's a God, but they don't want to believe in him. They don't want to believe that he exists, but they know there's a God. And they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus being God manifested in the earth, in the flesh. Let's put it that way. So it's the spirit of the Antichrist, of course. You all know that according to scripture. But at the same time, they believe it's a Jesus, but he was a mere prophet. Just anybody. I call these people agnostic. Then you have the second one. And it's a belief called atheism. This is a person that n never believed that God ever existed. And they never heard the word of God or anything about Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says to go into the world and teach and minister this gospel to all nations. Jesus says I'm not coming back and the end's not going to happen until the gospel's ministered and taught throughout all nations. But these people never heard it. Agnostic person, they heard the gospel, but they don't believe. You get what I'm saying? Write it down. Agnostic person, they heard the word of God, but they don't believe. But they know it's a God. And they call Jesus just a mere prophet. Or just somebody that walked the face of the earth. They never believed that he rose from the dead. They believe he's in the tomb and he still died like the people in Judaism. But a person of the atheism does never, never believe there ever was a God that ever existed. And they were never taught the word of God in order to understand. So they know nothing about our God. They know nothing about Jesus. They never heard the gospel of the kingdom at all. Then you have the people that's in, what's that word says, baby? Polythesium. Polythesium. P-O-L-Y-T-H-E-T-H-E-I-S-T-I-S-M. This is people that will not worship our God, but they worship their own God or goddesses. And they believe it's only one of those gods or goddesses exist. Or it could be many gods. 
but they believe mainly there's one God, but not Christ. Christ is not included. Now, there's another one called pantheism. P-A-N-T-H-E-I-S-M. This is a religious belief that everybody in the face of this earth is a God. And God's, and the God is in us all, around us all, but we're God. I, I can't understand that. How can God be all around and in you, but yet you saying you God? Mm -hmm. There has to be another God that makes you God. I don't get it. So I'm about to bust up some of these religious folks that think they're God. And I'm about to bust up a couple of these religious folks that don't believe there is a God. Then I'm about to bust up a couple of folks that never heard of God, never heard of Jesus Christ. I'm bringing the theology to you. And then I'm going to bust up the ones that think they're worshiping the right God or goddesses and that our God is an occult. Shame on you. I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus. I'm going to the Old Testament. Let's go to chapter 20. Let's look at verse 3. And let's go to verse 5. Okay. Listen to this. I want you to hear this clearly. It's just coming from the book. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall. That don't believe. Shall have no other gods before me. Listen to this. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Now, you should not make for yourself any other gods. Like an idol. Go ahead. Or any likeness. Or any likeness. Form or manifestation. Or manifestation. Go ahead. Of what is in heaven mm -hmm. above or on earth beneath mm -hmm. or in the water under the earth mm -hmm. has an object to worship. So you're not to take anything. Not even a statue. See, back in the Old Testament, they had statues like Molech. They had the statue of Baal. They had that statue of Osteride. And they would worship these gods and goddesses. But in this scripture, God set in the law with Moses, with the children of Israel, who used to worship ancestral gods. And he told them, read it from verse one again. No, read it from that second verse, verse four again. You, you shall, shall not, not make for yourself any idol. No idol. Or any likeness, mm -mm. form, manifestation of what is in heaven above. None of that. Or on the earth beneath. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Read. Or in the water under the earth. Or not make a God out of something that's up under the water. That I know some that believe in some gods under the water. Go ahead, mm -hmm. read. As an object to worship. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. You shall not worship them nor serve them. For I, the you Lord your God. You shall not worship them, <clears throat> compromise, or serve them. For what, baby? For I, the Lord your God, am for, jealous. For I, the Lord your mm -hmm. God. You want to see a jealous woman? You want to see a man that's jealous? You ain't seen nothing yet till you see a jealous God. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm a jealous God. Read. Okay. Impassioned God demanding what is rightfully and uniquely mine. And I demand. Was rightfully, I made you male and female. You are supposed to be mine. That's what God is saying. He, I made you, informed you. How dare you go out and betray me and go after another God? And I meant for you to be in my image and in my likeness. How dare you? Read that thing one more time, that part, baby. But I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. I'm a jealous, impassioned 
Demand I, God demanding what is rightfully and uniquely mine. I'm impassioned. I will not share you with nobody. Go ahead, read. And you uh, visiting, avenging the iniquity, the sin and guilt right. of the father. This is all verse 5. Mm -hmm. Read. The guilt of the fathers on the children. Mm -hmm. That is calling the children to account for the sins of their fathers. Mm -hmm. To the third and the fourth generations of those who hate. Who hate. Are you hearing what he's saying? I'm demanding what's rightfully mine. You're supposed to be mine. But I'm coming in this end time. And I'm going to visit the iniquity of the past that's here present. The ones that already admitted iniquity, I put them in hell. But the ones that are coming after the bloodline, through the third, through the fourth generation, that want to continue to sin, and you don't like me, you don't want to know about me being God, I'm coming to visit you. All hell is going to break loose in your world in this end time, because I'm coming with my wrath. In my judgment. That's what does save the Lord. That's what the prophecy said. Between now, 2025, judgment. Hmm. And judgment starts where? In the house first. In the house of the Lord first. To the people that are supposed to know God and supposed to be living by his word, they're going to be judged first. God's got to clean the house up first. Mm -hmm. He got to do some separation. Because it's been too much fake people in the mist for a long time. Yep. Time to clean the tear out from the wheat. Time to get the goat away from the sheep and separate. And the goat in this in this instance is not greatest of all times. Nope. Like they use in the sports nope. world. Nope. Different kind of goat. <laughs> because there's many that are dying in their sins today. I'm not going to say that Stevie Wonder was a saint. I don't know. He was one of my favorite singers. He's gone. Yes, yes, Stevie Wonder died this week. Another artist that you all know, especially in the rap game, and um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Here we go, here we go, here we go now. That guy, he passed away yesterday. There are many mm -hmm. that you're going to sit there and say, wow, I can't believe they died. At young they, ages, too. At young ages, too. 50-something. School. Yeah, fat man school. He passed away yesterday. We already, prophecy already went forth last week about this. You're going to see people that are famous that you would never believe that would die. And many had went on either to be with the Lord if they got saved or they made their maker someplace else. And it's not going to be no heaven. <clears throat> many have known the Lord and God gave him ample time and grace to get it right and at one time they believed in God and they turned their backs on God this is the time of judgment where many that have known God if they don't get it right in this time for some of these famous people out of here. And I've known some that started out right with God, but they're, but they're with the devil now. And they're not living the right life. I, maybe they called and cried out in the name of the Lord in the last day, saying, Lord, forgive me, just before they went. And they may have made it. I don't know. Or many were taken by surprise. Hmm. I can't tell you that. I don't know where they're going. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 2 that Jesus is going to judge their conscience according to Scripture to determine whether they're going to go to heaven or hell. So some may make it just by just by a little. Mm. What else does it say? Mama says, right? Read that scripture. It said, said, read it. I want you to read it from the King James. Read that bad boy. That, that one scripture. The King James Version. Verse 5. Yeah, verse 5. Okay. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nope, nor, nor serve God. them. No, serve them. For I, the Lord God, am a jealous God. And I'm going to do what? Visit the iniquity of the fathers now, upon the children. The fathers are dead. Hmm? But that spirit of you worshiping another God, that spirit of you believing that there's no God, that spirit that you believing, you heard the word, but you still don't want to believe, or that iniquity, or that belief, thinking that you're God now, I'm going to visit those iniquities from the ones that believe like you are on this earth. I'm going to visit you. And I'm going to show you who the real true God is. And I'm going to visit you how? Upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate I'm going to go down your bloodline. <clears throat> I'm going to go down your bloodline. And when you hated God, he said that for them that hated God, baby, mm -hmm. you hate me, there's going to be a generation after you that's going to hate me. I'm going to visit them. But they're not going to know why they're sinning. They don't know it came from you, from your bloodline, mm. for the ones that's already in the grave. They don't know it came. It, it was a generational curse that was passed down from generation to generation, that you had a generation of witches and warlocks, that you had a generation of people that were atheists, that you had a generation of people that were agnostic. That you had a generation of people that believed in different gods and goddesses. That you had a generation that believed that they are God in this earth. I'm going to come and visit them in their iniquity. The third and fourth generation. And I'm going to cut them off. That's what the word of God said. Turn to Matthew chapter 4. Look at verse 10. Look at what Jesus said to Satan. He tempted him. He was on a fast. Before, before baby speaks, he was on a fast, and Satan tried him the very last time. And I want and 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 and, and, and listen to what he said. Look at verse nine. Okay. You know, start, with start, start with verse eight. eight. Start with verse eight. Check this okay. out. This, this is how Satan did, tempted Jesus. Listen to this. Again, the devil taketh him up to an exceeding high mountain. See, the devil's <laughs> going to take you to a high mountain. And what is he going to do, baby? Show him all the kingdoms of the world. He showed you all the kingdoms of the world. So you only want to know what it means to feel to be rich and filthy rich and be a multi-millionaire and chase your dreams. And there's nothing wrong with <laughs> being a millionaire. But it's how you become a millionaire. And, and what it's you the, do with it. And it's what you do. And it's the mindset that you have when you get the moolah. Mm -hmm. So he knows that you love money. So he decided he was going to try Jesus the same way. Now, you would have fell for the bait. You would have fell for it. But Jesus didn't fall for this bait. Read on, baby. What happened? And the glory of them. And I'm going to give you all the glories of what? Of all the kingdoms of the world. All the kingdoms of the world. And Satan said unto him, all these things I will give thee. All these things I will give you. If thou will fall down and worship me. If you will only compromise. And want to be like me. Let me be your God. Mm. And many of you have sold your souls over to the devil. Wanting the same thing that Satan tempted Jesus to be like. And most of you failed the test. You're rich, you're filthy rich. But don't know where your life is going. You all messed up in here. But you got the mula. And in some cases, as quick as you got it, you lose it. Or you can lose your life. Mm -hmm. And that mula could be given to somebody else that quick. Mm -hmm. But 
Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus knew the motive of the devil. Mm -hmm. He knew that he wanted to be God so bad. So guess what? He came to earth trying to fool you to be either a God or worship the wrong God or believe there's not a God or had you in some other religion and had you secluded so you would not hear the word of God. One of the four. And you're all stuck up and you only, all of you have your own philosophy about who you think God is. And most of you say, are we gods? Yeah, I think we're God. But you have nothing to back up what you're saying. But I'm about to teach you the truth. Listen to this. Listen to how Jesus answered the devil. Okay, in verse 10. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Get behind me, hmm? Satan. Listen. For it is written. For it is written in Scripture. Check this. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. I shall worship the Lord my God. And him only shall thou serve. And I will only serve my God. My question is, what God are you serving? Or are you into yourself and saying that you are God when you're not? Or you don't believe there's a God. You're self-sufficient. You can do it all by myself. And it's always the same. Believe in yourself and nobody else. I believe in the power. But what God are you believing in? Are you believing in a higher power? Or are you believing in the true and living God? You just heard the scripture in Exodus. He's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's going to visit the iniquities of your forefathers, of your ancestors. To the third to fourth generation. So if you don't believe in God, somebody in your family didn't believe. Hmm. If you believe in a different God than the God that you're supposed to worship, somebody in your family back in the day didn't believe in a God like that. If somebody in your family was an atheist back in the day and they died and went on, you were atheist or agnostic. But I can't change you. I can only give you scripture. Hopefully, the Holy Spirit will do a work in you and transform and change you or come to you or you have a dream or open vision or revelation or something because God says he's not only going to shake earth, he's going to shake heaven too. He's going to reveal heaven to the ones that don't believe in order to get them to believe. Mm -hmm. Does God have to come down through Christ or through an angel or you have an a revelation of heaven and hell of you being taken out of your body in order for you to really believe? Does he have to do that? Jesus says, blessed are those who can't see yet believe. See, because you can't see it. I'm not going to believe until I see it. I'm from Missouri. Now you that see me would stay. be a blessed and highly favored person, one who can't see it but believes. But the problem with the church is, you know why we're all in all kind of mischief right now and we're doing stuff derogatory to the word of God? Because we've been waiting for a long mm -hmm. time for Jesus to come back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to how some of them are. And we're not seeing no signs. It's hardly no snap, no crackle, no pop in our life because we got tired of seeking God's face. We got tired of reading his word. Because we hear it over and over and over. We hear it over and over and over. But it's head knowledge to us. But we're not getting in here in order to change. Right. In order to be transformed. <clears throat> and that's the biggest problem. So we, we, we're we not seeing this thing out. Hmm. We're, we're not understanding that God is in us. His spirit. And that our spirit is supposed to connect with his spirit. Saying that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. 
So we can't identify with him according to scripture that, and we can't walk it out in our life. We get bored. And we do what we want to do. And all of a sudden, we become our own God. And then we miss the true and living God. Pretty much. That's what it all boils down to. Because we can't see God. But if we seek him and we get before our face and worship him and praise him and we get his word and his word comes alive, maybe we will be able to operate in the gift of discerning of spirits. And God will open our eyes so we will know that there is a spirit realm. But right now, you know what God is doing? He told us to go and do the evangelizing in the earth, right? We're not doing it. So guess who has to do it? God has to do it himself. He may come and visit you in your dream. He may come and open and put an open vision to those that don't believe there's a God. To give you a choice of whether you're going to choose him. And come to him. He may give you a true revelation and that you see hell for those that don't believe there's a hell. There's some of my friends right there on, on YouTube that did not believe there was a hell or a heaven. And God gave them a visitation and took them out of their bodies and took them in the spirit realm in order for them to see what was out there. And what was real. And right there, they, Jesus said, I'm not ready for you yet. I want you to go back to the earth. And I want mm -hmm. you to tell the people what you saw. But you don't believe in it. You won't believe it till you see it. He told, he told Thomas, he said, hey, I came back. Now touch the nail prints in my hand. Does a ghost have flesh? Now do you believe? Until... Doubting Thomas saw it for himself. That's when he said, my Lord, my God. That's what a lot of you atheists are going to say. When Jesus Christ comes in through the cloud for his church. When you see him come in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, when the last trump shouts, on the last day, and it's going to be too late for you. You're going to be down here at this tribulation period, and the dead in Christ is going to rise, and the rest of us that are alive and remain are going to rise up right in your face, just like Thessalonians said. And we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air, and we will forever be with the Lord. No doubt. You're going to see it but it's going to be too late for you. Hmm. But check this. There's a tribulation period. There's hard times coming where the Holy Spirit is going to be up out of here with us. But the only thing you're going to have to rely on once we go and once you see that there was really a Jesus the Christ, his scriptures are going to be still here for you to start seeking God and if you don't take the mark of the beast and you say no to the Antichrist and no to Satan and you're willing to die because you found out through the rapture that it was really a Lord Jesus the Christ, you'll be saved. And there'll be another resurrection for you. You might have your hair cut off down here, but you're going to be a whole person when he comes back the second time for the rest of his church, for the rest of his elect, for the rest of his remnant. You'll be part of that, but it's going to be some rough times here on earth, baby. It's better for you to listen to what I'm saying and get in the first part of that resurrection now and go up with us. You better start believing now. Some of you are going to play this message back on YouTube. Me and Lisa are going to be raptured up out of here. 
And you're going to remember what I said. You're going to play this message back. And you're going to see time and turmoil with the Antichrist, with the beast down here. And you're going to think he's the true Jesus. He's the true God. He's going to be working signs and wonders and miracles. They're going to be faults of the devil deceiving you. Because the true signs and wonders left when we left. Mark my word. Just because you hadn't seen it in your life. Don't mean it was ma not manifested here on the earth. Just because you didn't believe in the nine gifts of the spirit. Doesn't believe that it wasn't manifested on this earth. Might not have been manifested in your life. But it been manifested in my wife's life. And it been manifested in my life. And I know some other saints that have been manifested in. So there is a God. But it's not the God that you worship. So people say that they're God. But I'm going to take you to some scriptures. Two scriptures. It's going to blow your mind. And some of you, when you hear the scripture, you're going to jump and see, 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 that we are gods. But you only read one portion of that scripture. Yep. <clears throat> And I'm going to break it down and I'm going to teach it in layman's term. I'm going to break it down so good even a five-year-old can understand what I'm saying. What did Jesus say back there? What did he tell Satan? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only mm -hmm. and only him shall thy serve. Exodus chapter 20 says that I'm a jealous God and I'm coming to visit those that don't believe there's a God and they hate me or that hate me and I'm coming to your third and your fourth generation and I'm going to jack your family up because you won't believe in the one that created you and made you. You believe in a totally different God or you believe that you're a God or you don't believe in God at all. You heard the word, but you don't believe it. But I'm going to show you something different. I want you to turn to the book of Psalms. Yeah, David. And one of his ministers by the name of Asap, because David was in music ministry, wrote this as a song. But you're going to be reading words. And my wife is going to go, first of all, to the Jewish Bible because I'm going to tell you why. That real Aramaic and the real Hebrew gives out the truth of what, because this is the original translation. Then we're going to go back to King James. I want you to hear this argument about being God. Listen to this. We're going to Psalms 82. 82, starting with, starting verse, with one. verse 1. A Psalm of Asaph, Elohim. All right, now, Elohim, let me explain that, was a Hebrew and Aramaic name for God in the Old Testament. He is the what? Ancient of days. He is the God Almighty, understand this. He is the God of power. Now, God, let me explain what Elohim also means to us. Because a lot of the churches will not teach this doctrine. In the Jewish religion, and I'm talking about the Messianic Jews, the Jews that believe in Jesus Christ, not the Orthodox Jews that never believed that Jesus rose, not the scribes and the Pharisees, but I'm talking from the Messianic Jews, listen to what I'm, that believe in Yeshua, this is his original name, Hamasiah, which means Jesus the Christ in Latin and Spanish is Jesus Christos. The name Elohim can also mean that 
you if you are in Jesus Christ. Because the only way to God Almighty and the only way to God of our power is through Yeshua Hamasia. Listen to what I'm saying. And so since his power was extended and God became man. That's what Emmanuel means. You said that word Emmanuel means God with us. God came in the flesh like man in the earth. He was Elohim. The almighty God came down in the flesh, the God of power, the God of mercy, the God of love. He had all these characteristics. Why did he come? So he can identify himself with the ones that he created. Let me explain this. And when he identifies himself with the one that he created, he really wanted you to be his. So he can extend the same almighty love and power and the same love, the same grace, the same mindset, the same likeness, the same heart. He wanted to give it to us because we belong to him. He wanted to make us like him. So you can be Elohim. Listen, listen, listen. Like he's Elohim. So if he has the power, if you come to know his son, who rose from the dead, it was God that rose from the dead and went back to himself as the Lord Jesus the Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of himself. Are you understanding what I'm saying? In the flesh, he's the Son of God. But in the spirit, he's God. So he has extended his love. He has extended his power. He has extended his protection. He has extended his blood. He gave you all of this and expected you to walk on the face of this earth because he made man to be down here. Wow. He runs heaven over earth up there. So he is declared Elohim over in heaven, over Elohim in the earth. That's a different, I can't explain it no better. He's king in heaven over Kings in the earth. But the only way you can be a king or God in the earth, you have to be subject under his authority in heaven. You can't be no God to yourself. You got the only way you can be God, you have to go through God's son. Because he was God in the flesh and he gave us an example of how man should be on the earth. He lived 33 years. If you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Acts, that is a clear distinction about how God wants us to live here in the earth. But you want to do it your way. God made you for him. Your body does not belong to you. It belongs to God. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 
Before I break uh, the Psalms, hold that scripture in Psalms. Let me get out of this real quick. Mm -hmm. Boy, I just hit this. Yeah, this and right here, it's an abbreviation. First, First Corinthians, Corinthians 6. 6. Mm -hmm. I think uh, somewhere near the end, probably start with verse 9. Let's see where, where that's at. <clears throat> Don't you know that unrighteous people will have no share in the kingdom of God? If you're not righteous, <laughs> you will have no share in God's kingdom. Check this out. Don't delude yourselves. Hmm? That means don't fool yourselves. Hmm? People who engage in sex before marriage, who worship idols. There it goes again. Another God. Who engage in sex after marriage uh, with someone mm -hmm. other than their mm -hmm. spouse. Mm. Who engage in active or passive homosexuality. Who steal. Who are greedy. Who get drunk. Who assail people with contemptuous language. Who curse. Mm -hmm. Who rob. Mm -hmm. None of them will share in the kingdom of God. Read on. Verse 11, some of you used to do these things. Some of you used to do these things. Now, and he's, he's going somewhere. Now, check this out. Now that you you don't do these things no more, check this out. But you've cleaned yourselves. But you you got to clean yourself. Clean yourself. Mm -hmm. You have been set apart for God. You have to be set apart for God. You have come to the, be counted righteous. You have come to become counted righteous. Read this. Through the power of the Lord. Yeshua, the Messiah, uh -huh. and the Spirit of our God. So it's Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, and it's the Spirit that he left. Check this out. Verse 12 says, you say, mm -hmm. for me, everything is permitted. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but not everything is helpful. So everything that you do may not be of God. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. It may be right to you, because you, you believe in yourself and you're your own God, right? And you want to do it your way, right? Mm -hmm. But it may not be helpful. It may be harmful to you. Check mm -hmm. this. For me, everything is permitted. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to let anything gain control over me. But see, you've gotten a life where you let a lot of things gain control of you. And you think it's normal to be that way. Paul says, I'm not going to become a slave to something that's going to hold me back from knowing who my God is. I want to be like him and in the power of how he was resurrected. If he had the power, I want his power, but I want to be like him. How do we do that? Read. Verse 13, food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. Maybe, but God will put an end to both of them. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, the body is not meant for sexual immorality. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. The body is not made only for food, even though you need to. <clears throat> and it's not made really for sexual immorality. Only in, in, in the news of marriage it's made. Because mm -hmm. marriage shows the relationship between Jesus and the church. So the correlation means me and Lisa being married so it's the relationship between God and it's supposed to be a relationship with you but you'd rather be to yourself and do what you want to do but listen to what this says Read. okay the body is not meant for sexual immorality but for the Lord but the body's for who the Lord the Lord and the Lord is for the body mm -hmm. God raised up the Lord, and he will raise us up too by his power. So if the body is made by the Lord, right? Listen to this. When God gets ready to raise us up in this last day, he's going to raise us up by his power. But if you have no relationship with God through Jesus Christ, how can you be raised up? Answer that question. How can you be raised up when you have no relationship with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He said that his, your body is meant for him. And if you're not using your body for him, he's not raising you up. But if you're using your body for God, when Jesus comes back, and like I said in the moment, you are out of here. You're going to be resurrected. Because you trying to be like God while you're on earth. Now, now, this is powerful, this next one in verse 15. 
I want you to, chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, verse 15. I want you to get this. Read. Don't you know that your bodies are parts of the Messiah? Don't you know that your body that you going out doing crazy stuff with, smoking a blunt, acting crazy, drinking liquor, having sex with women and men, doing crazy stuff with, smoking crack cocaine, don't you know that your body is supposed to be part of Jesus, the Messiah? When it says Messiah, he's talking about Jesus resurrected in the Jewish person, in the Aramaic person's eyes. Read. So am I to take parts of the Messiah and make them parts of a prostitute? Shall I, who have a relationship with Christ, make my body part of somebody else, another religion or another female or, or another God, or I believe I'm God and there's nobody superior than me. Should I prostitute myself that way? Heaven forbid. He's asking you that question. Mm -hmm. Shall I do it? Mm -hmm. Read. Heaven forbid. Don't you know that a man who joins himself to a prostitute becomes physically one with her? So he's not only talking about somebody that has sex, but he that joins his body to another God, you become one with that God? Or you become one with yourself and you're self-centered <clears throat> and you walk in pride? Or, or you believe that there is no God? So it's just you by yourself pretty much. You that join yourself to Buddha? You that join yourself to the Hindu gods? You that join yourself to the spirit of Osterite? You that join your spirit to, to Baal or Balaam? All of these are, are not our God. They're your God. That's what you choose. But you become one with them. Mm -hmm. Check this. For the Tanakh says mm -hmm. the two will become one flesh. From the Torah, from even from the law of Moses, <clears throat> it said these two will become one flesh. That means you have no union with the one that actually really created you. So was that God of a higher power, the one that raised you, that, that made you? Was Buddha the one that made you? <clears throat> Was Hare Krishna the one that made you? Was Allah the one that created you? Are you hearing what the Word of God is saying? You gotta be. You're gonna become one with whatever God you're worshiping. You better be careful. Read. It says the two will become one flesh, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. But the person that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 says, run from sexual immorality. Listen to this. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, mm -hmm. but the fornicator sins against his own body. So if you commit fornication, you're sinning. Against your own body. More than likely, sickness and diseases are going to come. More than likely, something's going to come that may cut your life short if you continue mm. in that mess because you're not submitting your body to the one that created you. Read on. Okay. Or don't you know that your body is a temple for the. Ah. Oh. So once you commit it to Christ, your body is supposed to be the temple for. Rah Hakadash. Who lives inside you? What is Rah? Rah means the wind. Kadesh means the holy wind. So we're talking about He, the Holy Spirit. That's the name in Aramaic and Hebrew. Who lives where? Inside of you. He's, if you know the name, the name of Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit that God put in you is supposed to be in you. And you're, you're supposed to connect with the Spirit of God. And you're supposed to be one with Him. 
Elohim. You become like him. That's why Jesus says, greater works that I did, now you will do. Because I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to watch. And I'm going to observe. Elohim in heaven is transferred to the Elohim in the earth. Now that I explained that and you understand, let's go back to Psalms 82. Never heard it that way, have you? Never heard it that way, huh? Let me show you something else. Psalms, you went right there. Psalms 82. Look at verse 1. Start with verse 1. Read it again. A Psalm of Asaph, huh? Elohim. Now, Elohim in this is you if you have a relationship with who? God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Making him God, your creator in your life. What is his name in the Aramaic and Hebrew? Yeshua HaMessiah or the Messiah who's risen. Elohim stands in where? The divine assembly. Where is the divine assembly? Where are the people that are spiritual like him? The ones that know Jesus Christ. See, David and Asaph was prophesying about this time. They didn't see it. But they saw in the spirit. Elohim. God almighty. With all power. Among. Their chosen. The divine assembly. I'm giving you revelation. He seen it. They, it wasn't back in those times. But he was caught up in heaven. And he was given a revelation. And he sang a song about it. Esau. Esau was a serious prophet around David. Right along with Nathan and the rest of them. If you want to study about Esau. Esau was a prophetic person. A prophet who sang songs. And he seen things in the spirit that you wouldn't believe. He saw us. Before God, Elohim, in him making us Elohim in the earth. He saw the divine assembly of these people. And check out what happened. Stands in the divine assembly there with the Elohim, the judges. Ah. Uh, he judges. Ah. Uh, How long will you go on judging unfairly, favoring the wicked? Yeah. He says, there with the Elohim. Notice, a, if you look at it in the Aramaic Bible, it's a small e. Want to know why? Because he's talking about us here in the earth. Being like him. That's why Jesus had, God had to come in the form of the earth to man. So it was God with us in the earth, in the flesh, because God is a spirit, right? Mm -hmm. But he had to make himself known in flesh to us to show us how to be like God. Or man would have never known what it was to be like God. So we are, he, he was with the divine assembly, that's us. There with us, the Elohim, we are the judges. And I can show you scripture in verse showing. It said the Bible says the righteous man judges all things. And I'm not talking about the judgment where we're pointing fingers and pointing out people's faults. I'm talking about the judges based on the things concerning the spirit of God that's not of God that's in the face of this earth. We are sit here as judges in the earth or Another word for judges from the Old Testament is the New Testament apostles. Didn't know that, did you? See, when Samuel was the last judge, remember, the people went against his ministry. 
And they told God, and they told Samuel, you old. We don't need no judges no more. We don't want you. We would rather have a king. And what did God tell Samuel? Leave him alone. Let it be. They're going to see the hardships. The same thing is happening in this earth. God is raising up true apostolic people who are running in the line. Because remember, the past always repeats itself. Mm -hmm. And these apostolic people are coming, the truth. And there are churches and there are people that oppose the apostolic ministry today. And they talk down to it. Now, I see why sometimes they talk down to it. Because some of you are not apostles. You just sit your butt down. You need to sit your butt down. Some of you are not true apostles. I can teach you on that all day long, but we're not going there. We're talking about who are gods and why we, why the people in the world go around saying they're gods versus the children of God who God says are like him. Are supposed to be like him. That's all we're trying to identify right now. Now, it says he judges, mm. right? Mm. And he says, How long will you go on judging unfairly and favoring the wicked? Why did Asap say that? Because he had no revelation of the Son of God yet. He can foresee in the spirit what was. But you got to put yourself in an Old Testament. They never knew Jesus. They never knew anything about God's grace. So they thought that the wicked was getting away with murder back then. And the righteous were getting it. So they were blaming God. But all along, it was Satan's doing. They didn't know what spiritual warfare was about. They didn't know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, against wickedness, and all this stuff. They didn't know all this back then. So you got to put yourself in the context of what ASAP was singing. Now, notice he said Selah. Because it's for something for you to think about. Think about I gave you verse 1 and 2 in a nutshell. And I gave you revelation. So you need to sit down and think about it. Think on these things. That's what she got to think on these things Thursday for. That's why you got to see Lisa on Thursday. Now, let's look at verse 3. Okay. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Mm -hmm. Uphold the rights of the wretched and the poor. Mm -hmm. Rescue the destitute and the needy. Mm -hmm. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They don't understand. They wander about in darkness. Meanwhile, all the foundations of the earth are being undermined. All right now, <clears throat> ASAP, if you go back up here, he was talking to the father. He was telling the father, Father, you need to give justice to the weak and to the fatherless. You need to uphold the rights of the poor because they had no mediator. He was talking to God. He can see he had God's heart because this is God's heart. He's a God of justice. He's a God of the fatherless. He's a God that goes and reaches to those that are weak. He upholds the right and wretched of the poor. He rescues the destitute and needy, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. But Asaph was asking God to do this because all he can see was crime going on, crazy stuff going on. But God was already setting himself up and I already did this and was doing this. But as man that didn't really not have a full relationship with God like he was supposed to. Because, let's put it this way. There was no Messiah. Say so they only saw God for what they could see him for. And they were praying for this. And they were asking, deliver them from the power of the wicked God. They don't know. They don't understand. They're wandering around in darkness, Lord. Meanwhile, all the foundations of the earth is being undermined. We're all going through. God, how can you help us? 
when we're down and out? How can you help us when we're destitute? How can you help us when we don't know how to identify fully with you yet? Now look at verse 7. Read this. No, no, six. no six, six. Let's read this. My decree is you are Elohim, God's oh. judges. Wait, wait, wait. What? Say, say it again. My decree is you are Elohim. You are who? Elohim. You are God's judges. And you're judges. Sons of the Most High. But you that say they are God, see, see, the Bible says that we're God's. But you didn't finish reading everything. And I just went through verse 1 and verse 2 and broke it down. And he's going to say the same thing right here. My decree is, or my constitution, my writing, my law says, you are gods. You are judges. But you're subject, sons and daughters. Under the most high. So does, does it sound like you're a God to yourself? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You're subject. And you are supposed to be under authority. And under my power. I'm the king in heaven. Over the kings in earth. Whatever I say in heaven. Let it be done here on earth through you. That's how I identify myself with my sons and daughters in the earth. Don't look at me like you this you teaching the new doctrine. Uh-uh. Right here, I'm reading from the original Bible. Not no King James. I'm going back to the Aramaic and Hebrew. It says, you are Elohim's. So Jesus says, greater works you will do, just like I did. And you're identifying yourself with God. But you're to be under and subject under authority. If you go to that job, you got a boss, don't you? That's right. Got to be subject under authority. When you go to church, you got a pastor. Got to be subject under that authority. Even in my business, is me having my own business. Still, I'm leased on with the company. There is some type of me humbling myself to somebody. Am I right? If I don't, I'm not going to get a paycheck. If you don't want your lights turned off, you're going to be subject to the electric company. Hello? <laughs> if, you don't, you... if you want your house not stinking, you better be subject under that trash company too. Yeah. So don't go around saying, I'm my own God. No, you're not. If you want to drive 80, 90 miles an hour in a 35 miles of speed zone, you are subject to the city police. Write this down. I want you to never forget this. As long as I live, write it down and say it. I will be subject under some type of authority. And you're going to have to learn to humble yourself, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See, us Americans, we're spoiled. But there's going to come some dictatorship to this country. Quick, fast, and a hurry. Because of the sins. And many of you are going to be subject under authority. It's going to break that pride. Quick, fast, and a hurry. Because you may not have the freedoms that you've been used to having. Because things in this nation is going to change. It's coming. Just like some of these third world countries. It's coming. Then you're going to see how they felt. In their own country. Because you don't know how to submit under godly authority. It says, nevertheless, it says, it says you are Elohim's and you're God's judges. Sons of the Most High. So you are God, but you're subject under a God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Turn to Matthew 6, Lord's Prayer. I want them to get this. You say the Lord's Prayer 
all the time, but you don't understand what it's saying. Look at verse, verse nine. nine. Six verse nine. You therefore pray like this, Listen our Father in heaven. Listen to this. May your name be kept holy. Mm -hmm. May your kingdom come. Wait, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Your kingdom. May your kingdom come. And your will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. On earth. Just like it is in, in heaven. heaven. So, if he's the God of heaven and he created you to be here on earth, <clears throat> you're supposed to accept his kingdom from heaven. You're supposed to accept his kingdom from heaven on earth. You're supposed to be subject under his kingdom rule. He's king in heaven over king in the earth. You're supposed to follow his instructions. But the problem is we're rebellious. You want to be a God. But the only way you can be a God, you have to be subject under God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who's already risen. Kingdom come on earth just like it is in heaven. You're subject under rule, rulership. Mm -hmm. That's your dictatorship. It's supposed to be. But most of you want to be a god. Most of you want to believe a different goddess and a god. Most of you don't want to believe in God. What else does it say? Let's go back to, let's go back to uh, Psalms again, 82. Just wanna sidetrack, cause I got a cross reference in order to explain to you, this is the only way you can be a God. 82, I think it's verse five, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Asap pleads with God to come for a man because they don't understand and they wander around in darkness. Meanwhile, the foundation of the earth is undermined. <clears throat> Earth's about to be destroyed. But this is our way. You have to be a God subject as a son under the most high God. And the only way you can do it is through Yeshua HaMessiah, the Lord Jesus, the Christ. You cannot submit under God unless you submit under the Son because God had to come to earth manifested in the flesh like you in order to bring you back to the God and the Spirit. He gave you an example to follow. And if you're not following that example, you will miss God. Nevertheless, verse 7, what does it say? It says, nevertheless, you will die like mortals. Mm -hmm. Like any prince, you will fall. No, 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 check this out. Why did we, he say that? Because you're a god in the earth. Mm -hmm. You're Elohim. It's a small g and a small e. He made you from dust of the ground. And he breathed in you his oh, his breath, his spirit, his pneuma, his God kind of life, so you can be like him. But this body is going back in the ground. It's made of dust. So you're just a mere mortal, but your spirit man lives on. And like a prince, you're going to fall. Mm -hmm. Now look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, rise up, Elohim. Mm -hmm. Happily and mm -hmm. judge the earth, mm -hmm. for all the nations are yours. Rise up, Elohim, and the judge, and judge the earth, for 
all the nations are yours. That's a revelation. Let me break that down. Why isn't the earth yours now? Why? Because we have the prince of the power of the air, Satan. Mm -hmm. But he made you Elohim to rule in your world while you're here in the earth. Now, he tells you to rise up. Just like Asaph said, Lord, rise up. You already risen up. You're sitting at the right hand of the Father. But Asaph never witnessed God dying in the flesh and being risen back to himself in spirit and in the flesh. See, he never witnessed that. So just as he was resurrected, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. he became the judge of the earth for what? All nations are what? Yours is his. Mm -hmm. And also you identify with Jesus Christ because when he comes back for his church, you're going to rise up like him. And you're Elohim too in connection with him. But before you rise up, you're going to take over the nations. And then when you come back after the tribulation period, with the people that didn't accept the mark of the beast, the Jews and the Gentiles together. And he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years on this earth during the millennium period. And Satan's going to be locked up. And Jesus is going to come back with us reigning and ruling where? Here in all the nations. It's going to be ours. Asap had a serious revelation of what was going to happen in the future. We're coming back to reign and rule with Christ and we're going to be Elohim with them in the earth. We're going to be gods under gods. So whatever he says, we got to do. Whatever he says, we got to obey. Can't be rebellious. And he says, if you Reign and rule and be subject unto me. We're going to rule the nation. This is what it means to say that we are gods, but we're under God. One more. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Look at verse 34. Now. These religious leaders were giving Jesus a hard time because he was identifying himself with his own God, the Father, because he was God incarnated in the flesh on the earth. But the Jews that were walking in the flesh never understood it. These were Orthodox Jews. So it came to a point when Jesus had to reveal to them the mysteries one of the mysteries of the spirit. And this blew their mind. But when you read this, some of you that go around saying you're gods, you went around, see, see, even Jesus said we're God. Even Jesus said we're God. But that's not what he meant. You need to read the whole scripture. I want baby to start with verse 34. Check this out. Yeshua answered them, isn't it written in your Torah? I have said you people are Elohim. Mm. If he called... Elohim, the people to whom the word of Elohim was addressed, mm -hmm. and the Tanaka could not be broken. That means the law cannot be broken. So what he's saying, if he called Elohim, if he called you, God, to whom the word, okay, because Jesus is the word, Elohim, was addressed. So in other words, they're still subject under authority. See, he called you Elohim. And you're supposed to submit yourself to the word of Elohim. And he says, didn't your Torah, didn't your law say this? And he said, then the law of the spirit, the Tanakh, cannot be broken. But you have to be subject. It says, the word Elohim, the word. You have to be subject. You are Elohim, subject under 
the word Elohim. Jesus Christ breaks it down even better. He's telling you he's the word, but I'm on earth right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting ready to be resurrected. And when I'm resurrected, I'm going to be called the word. Because if you go to the first John chapter six, verse, excuse me, verse five, six to seven, it says there are three that identify in heaven. It says God, the father, the word and the Holy Ghost. So he's letting you know that in the future, after I'm risen up, I'm going to be Elohim, the word, and you will be little Elohims in the earth and you're going to be subject unto my words. Pretty much. But you going on because you don't read and you read the other part. Oh, we're gods. See, the Bible says we're gods. But how are you gods? Did you go through Jesus? So you're not God. Got to go through Jesus in order to be a God in the earth. But you're subject under authority. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you say. Read it again, Mama. If he called what? If he called Elohim, mm -hmm. the people to whom the word of Elohim was addressed, mm -hmm. then the Tanakh cannot, cannot be, broken. be broken. Check this out. Verse 36, 36 mm -hmm. then are you telling the one whom the Father set apart as holy mm -hmm. and sent into the world, you are committing blasphemy? Just because I said I am son of Elohim? So, then you're telling the one whom God set apart Jesus was set apart as holy. And he was sent to where? The world. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to tell me that I'm blaspheming God? Just because I identify myself with God the Father? What Jesus was trying to tell these knuckleheads is that you need to identify yourself with the Father but you have to go through me and acknowledge me first, and then you can become Elohims under submission. But they were believing it the Old Testament way and not seeing what Jesus was saying. And Jesus even had to go to the Old Testament to show them Psalms 82. And they still didn't get it. And they still don't today, like my wife just said. There's people in the church that would sit here right now and argue with me and will not be able to identify themselves in Christ. They will only go by Ephesians chapter 1, but miss out what's cross-referenced to Ephesians chapter 1. Because in Ephesians chapter 1, it should be at the beginning of the Bible, really. Because Ephesians chapter 1 talks about us being predestinated or our, our, our purpose in life was founded before the world even begun. <clears throat> so God foreknew that you were going to be Elohim or a God in the earth under a God in heaven because he chose you before the foundation of the world to do it. It says it in the book of Ephesians. Need to read it. Verse 5 and 6. You've been predestined. I don't even have to turn it. I know it from the top of my head because I know who I am. Do you know who you are? In Christ. You are the fullness of of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in Christ. And the Bible says in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, let's go there, verse 9. I want to show you where you are, God. Mm -hmm. For in him bodily lives the fullness of all that God is. What is that? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what else? And it is in union with him and that with, you have been made full. And you have been in union with Christ. And you have been made full. And he's the what? He is the head of every rule and authority. 
So guess what? You're the head of every rule and authority. Because turn to Psalms 10, 19. Y'all don't read your Bible. You got to be able to identify with this stuff. This is John 10, 19. Did you say Psalms? No, John. Oh, I thought you said Psalms. No, Luke, Luke. I'm sorry, Luke, Luke. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. What is that? Remember, I have given you authority. What, what, so what, 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 this is Jesus talking now. This is St. Alan talking. He's giving you what? Authority. He's giving you power. Go ahead. So and you authority. can trample down snakes and scorpions. So if evil spirits come down, you walk all over them. Go ahead. Indeed, all of the enemy's forces, mm -hmm. and you will remain completely unharmed. Nothing will ever hurt you. You are God in the earth, under the God in heaven. Through who? Yeshua, Hamasiah, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. I got to take two steps for me and get out of here. Father, I ask you to touch the masses. Open their heart. Give them revelation according to your scripture. Help them to understand what the scripture is saying when they say, are we gods? Help them to know you in the power of your resurrection. Reveal yourself to them as Elohim. Show them open their eyes that they would not be blind to what your word is saying. In Jesus' name we pray. And that their ears be open to hear and their eyes be open to see what the Spirit is showing them and what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lisa has some important announcements to make about Thursday and about November 30th. Shoot them, Lisa. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you're I want you to join me. Stay tuned every Thursday where I do a series called Think on These Things Thursdays coming from Philippians 4 and 8. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's not real long, but it just gives you a quick word of encouragement, something to think on. We go to church Wednesday. We go to church Sunday. And... He, how many of us, our lives are actually changing because of it? We, we do our duty. We do God a favor. We show up at church. And we're still stuck in the same rut. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. But we have got to mature. Those mm -hmm. of us that name the name of Jesus Christ, we've got to come to a point of maturity mm -hmm. in our walk on this earth with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And every week I give you something to think on and so that we can begin to change the way we think mm -hmm. when we change the way we think we're going to change the way we confess and change the way we our behavior is mm -hmm. in this earth and become more christ-like mm -hmm. so just join me every thursday when i bring you think on these things thursdays mm -hmm. and then we have coming up in november saturday november 30th mm -hmm. sunday december 1st we are going to have our first annual healing and deliverance conference mm -hmm. This year, it's going to be held in Greenville, North Carolina. Greenville, North Carolina. Maybe a different locations each time. This year, it's going to be Greenville, North Carolina Jesus um, at Jesus Saves Ministry under the Apostle Lonnie Stock Sr. Mm -hmm. The address will be 1007 mm -hmm. West Arlington Boulevard mm -hmm. in Greenville. Mm -hmm. It will start on November 30th at 830 with breakfast. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves to eat. Mm -hmm. Then make sure you bring your, um, he likes to say that it's some real good cooking. South, yeah. He says South That's Kakalaki. That's a South Kakalaki cooking, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going low country mm -hmm. style. But bring your notebooks and your pens. And for those of you who say, what's that? That's, those are the same ones who don't know what a rotary dial phone is. So bring your electronic devices and be prepared to take, take notes. Take notes, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to need this. Because we're going to have some different, uh, we're going to have seminars that day, different teachers. We have our pastor, Pastor Jonathan Cook, coming from the Sanctuary of Jacksonville right here mm -hmm. in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. He's going to be speaking. 
We have Apostle Omar Morton coming from Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. We have Apostle Chris Johnson coming from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday, Alan and I will be closing out the service with uh, Sunday service, mm -hmm. healing and deliverance service. It's going to be a blessing. If you have um, leadership that you want to send to it, or it's open to anybody, really. It's open to anybody that would like to come. There is a cost for the seminar. It's $27 mm -hmm. per person. Mm -hmm. And you can either pay at the door or we take the payments ahead of time. You can either send Cash App to mm -hmm. Alan. Those of you who like to do Cash App, mm -hmm. send it to dollar sign. Dollar sign A Train, A T R A T R A I N 1960. Or you can send it in the mail to Restore and Unify Ministries, Attention Lisa Johnson. We have a P.O. Box, 12052, Jacksonville, North Carolina, 28546. Mm -hmm. Or you can call me on my cell phone at 252-638-9449. I would give you his number, but he drives truck over the road. He's just going to tell you to call me. So just call 252-638-9449. Because if he's driving truck, you can't take the payment over the road. Yep. Just make it that much easier. All right, stay tuned for our teaching, and um, probably be on tomorrow. And I'm talking on the topic, me and Lisa. How are we supposed to see and hear God according to Scripture? How are we supposed to see and hear God according to Scripture? You don't want to miss this. We love you to life. I'm Al. I'm Lisa. Restore Unified Radio Ministry. We'll see you on tomorrow. Ciao.